when they are happy. It's a big one, I did. I never said a coding with that diameter. Every great success starts with a failure. <laughs> In this video, we're cutting an aluminum ring from a solid block of 6061 aluminum. The client gave us specifications that the ring needs to be one and a half inches in length, about four inches for the outside diameter, and around one quarter inch for the wall thickness. Of course, this job could have been easily done using an aluminum extruded round tube stock. Cut the stock at the specified length, then refining the stock in a lathe. But the customer was in a time crunch, so we offered our services to make an attempt to mill a ring out of a solid block. The camming of the part is pretty simple, where we actually create the geometry so we can provide machining operations for the machine. The ring is composed of just two circles, one for the outside diameter and one for the inside diameter. I also wanted to create the geometry for the block so we can find the correct origin on the aluminum block so the ring would be milled generally in the center of the block. The thickness of the ring is determined by the stock thickness. Then a machining operation is applied to the circles. The outside has an outside profile so the end mill will mill along the outside of the line creating an outer wall. And the inside profile so the end mill will mill along the inside of the line creating an inner wall. During the creation of the milling operations, I didn't take care to adjust the depth per pass. <laughs> I left the depth per pass at the default values that I use for plexiglass, which is a bit deeper than a quarter inch. The value I should have started with is 0.1 inches. That is, if I was using an on-shoot end mill rather than a general purpose cheap end mill. I always provide a roughing and then a finishing pass to clean up any issues that may have been caused by load on the bit while machining. Finally, I created the holding tabs so the ring would be in place during all of the machining operations. We've cut aluminum before, but using a quarter inch end mill. Cutting into a quarter inch thick aluminum stock. Our quarter inch end mills have a one and one eighth inch flute length, not quite long enough to penetrate the entire stock. Where quite a bit of shank from the end mill would have rubbed along the top of the aluminum causing a great amount of heat. So we can't use the quarter inch end mill. So we had to use a one half inch end mill, which has a two inch flute length. Heat is the main attribute of machining that you want to try to eliminate. And that is especially when you're trying to machine aluminum. Since aluminum has a low, relatively low melting point. And when you start machining um, aluminum, the bit can actually get too hot and start to melt the aluminum, at least melting the aluminum chips. When the aluminum starts melting and the, and the bit is digging into the aluminum, the aluminum chips are get rather sticky and then can fuse into the flutes of the of the end mill, rendering the end mill useless and then the end mill will eventually get stuck. Okay, in this attempt I reduced the depth per pass to 0.1 inches instead of the default that I was using before. I'm using a 0.1 inches depth per pass because our quarter inch end mills can do this in 0.05 and now we're using a half inch end mill so I'm doubling the depth per pass. I should be able to go even uh, deeper with a better end mill, but we're using a cheap end mill. So I kept the feed rate as fast as possible. I want to maintain the feed rate because we want to make sure that the end mill is always digging into cooler material. So the, the material actually acts as a um, sort of a coolant. And the faster you go around through the material, the cooler the end mill will be. It seems counterintuitive, but that's actually uh, the way um, dry cutting is, is done, is you go through the material far faster, you might do a, a shallower depth per pass. Even though we did maintain the speed, it did seem like the end mill is still getting pretty hot, so I'm finding that this end mill is probably not the best end mill to cut aluminum. I think we went too deep. Uh, we used the wrong end mill. I'm not 100% sure of that. You need that, uh, when you cut an uh, aluminum, you need to be fast so the end mill doesn't uh, get too hot too quickly. I really should have selected a higher quality end mill and one that exhibits the flute geometry specifically appropriate for cutting aluminum. In this third attempt, the end mill was still having a hard time during some deep passes 
and I believe this is attributed to the heat buildup. The chips were fusing into the flutes of the end mill. Another condition that we saw that could be building up heat is that the end mill was actually stopping at a portion of the circle and then going back around. And when it gets to the, when it gets to the start point, it stops again because it has to go down and then go around and then it has to go down and then go around. But this part of going down, it actually is in a condition called a lead-in. It's leading into the next um, pass. But the lead-in is at a 10 degree angle, where when you, when you reduce the depth per pass, this lead-in is actually kind of shortened. What we, what we do to alleviate this is to reduce the angle and we reduced it to about one degree. So it will have a longer lead in. So when it comes around, it'll start to lead in and then continue on. So it doesn't appear to stop and that will reduce a little bit of heat as well. You know, we do add liquid later on so that problem seems to go away. So it could be the, the ML getting too hot, which she placed into the, the wrong um, materials of the end mill where it's not uh, in the design as well for not for cutting uh, for cutting aluminum. Um, yeah, I, I think it's better to go to go fat, stay fast, but just go light. You know, the end mill is hot though. I mean, I touched the end mill, uh, which I wouldn't recommend. It, so uh, I was a little bit careful when when it came to that. So I was uh, I was comfortable touching the end mill fairly quickly. Uh, so you know you don't get burned if if it, if it is indeed too hot. We might actually have to, we may have to go a little faster. The, the chips actually look pretty big. They do. Yeah, so that's actually a, not a bad thing. It's just the, the, the end mill is just the wrong end mill. That was the reason why it, it stopped working, it's because of it, because of the gumming up and the heat. Or what we do is we stop it every third circle, have it pull up, wait, go back down, do another three, which is only like, going to be that much. You want to bump it up? 220? Yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, Two, uh <laughs> 150. And then stop yeah. it to check the heat after a, a make... few passes of cutting. <laughs> In our last attempt, but it wasn't a completely successful attempt, we were able to cut out the entire ring. But we had to go to a 0 0.025, which is a, an incredibly small depth per pass. Our quarter inch end mill can far surpass this and this is because we're not using an on or a higher quality end mill. We added cutting fluid so we could get less heat and one of the problems we had was when it finally got to the bottom we had a problem where it was starting to shudder or starting to, to get some vibration so we ended that process without doing the finishing passes which was a problem. So our wall thicknesses are actually not consistent with what the customer needed. I would like to attempt cutting aluminum with a better end mill, the ones that we normally use like an onshrewd. So we're gonna get a half inch onshrewd, a single flute that is actually designed to cut aluminum and we're going to demonstrate cutting aluminum, a, an aluminum block of the same dimensions and the same um, geometry and we're gonna see what results we get.